everyone, welcome back. My name is Steven and this is another Bama Salt Water Fishing video. Beautiful morning out here in Orange Beach, Alabama. We're going through Perdido Pass to get out into the Gulf of Mexico. Have a 20 mile run. It's a nice winter day, very pretty. Bringing nothing but artificials, got some vibes. Got some slow pitch jigs. That's that new Squid Trex by Nomad. Can't wait to use that. We're gonna see if we can catch us some fish. So there's the bridge. We have a very big yacht going out of there. And then we have a pretty fountain power boat going out of there as well. Fountain center console. Uh, you can't see it, he's already gone. Well, that's a big old yacht. Can't wait for y'all to join me. Let's go do some fishing. What is going on everybody? We just made it out to our spot. So the first thing I want to throw is Nomad Squid Tracks. This is a new lure out by Nomad. Not sponsored by them or anything, but I just think it's really cool and I like their products. I'm running about six foot of 80 pound mono leader. So we're gonna be slow pitch jigging it. This is a Diewell X of 300 left hand PE4 jigging braid. So you can look that up. It's just symmetric sizes for braid. It's about 44, 55 pounds depending on what brand you go with. And then a Star Plasma 2 six foot eight slow pitch rod. This is a medium. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this squid tracks down and see what we can find. Here we go. Let's get this joker down. It's 90 feet of water. Getting a lot of good marks. Look at that. It's a lot of structure down there. Lots of bait. Just gonna let this jig fall. We're doing a controlled descent because a lot of times these fish will hit it on the way down. So I'm kind of keeping my finger on the line and feeling it just in case. First fish, on, oh, came off. Let's see if he'll come back and grab it. I wasn't prepared. <clears throat> Got first one on. Oh, <laughs> rod almost came out of my hand. Here we go. Let's see what this is going to be on the squid tracks. Oh man, this will be cool if it's something we can take home and eat. Nope, red snapper, it's gotta go back. So at least he ate that squid though. Check that out, pretty little fish. Well, time to let him go. There you go, buddy. Gotcha. <laughs> on the drop. Majority of the time they they hit it on that fall anyway. Hmm. Falling pretty good, aren't you? <laughs> Let's get you up, buddy. Let's see what you're gonna be. Red snapper. It's a nice red snapper. Wow, <laughs> that is insane. I'm just kind of using my thumb to stop the line from being pulled out by the drag. We're gonna winch this thing up. Mm, that is nuts. I don't know how many of these I can handle. I don't even know what it is. That is insane, y'all. Check out this. Hard fighting fish. Haven't seen it yet. Okay, there's the leader. Oh, that's why he's hard fighting. Because he was snagged in the tail. Of course they're gonna fight harder in the tail. Daggum. So a few videos ago I came out jigging and it got some great results. And I love doing it. Seemed like y'all enjoyed watching it. 
So we're back out again. This is an amberjack. If you watched my last video, I wore myself out on these. They are out of season, and that's why it fought extra hard because I had them in the tail. So I got that out. We're gonna let this beast go, and hopefully he'll become a big reef donkey one day. There he goes. Those are fun fish. They are hard fighters. <laughs> Not quite what I'm after, but add to the variety today, Red Snapper and AJ's. Plastic's holding up okay, but the eyes are now gone, so there's no eyes left. But they'll still hit it, let's keep on fishing. I don't really want a whole bunch of those today, but we're gonna drop this down again. Oh, as soon as I dropped it down. I didn't even work it yet and something already hit it so they like that action I'm gonna get you up mm. like I'll just let it fall oh dang there we go <laughs> yeah a little ump to him that's a really big red snapper right there y'all check out that red snapper that thing's a beast <laughs> pretty one that would be a good one in the season let's get that out of his mouth he's got to go back at least we know where they are for when the season opens. Pretty fish. There you go. <sighs> All right. Well, that was a good one. Those are fun. I don't mind catching those, but uh, I don't want to pull up too many of them. But at least he liked the lure. I didn't even have to work it. It just fell right down and he ate it. I'm going to get this back down again and keep on fishing. See what else we can get. Go ahead, drop down this little vibe. This is a little Nomad Vertrex, a fish imitating one. And we're gonna be doing this on some light tackle. So, a little 30 pound fluorocarbon, 15 pound braid, 2500 size Daiwa, and a seven foot medium heavy star rod. That's a plasma two rod, really like these. Let's drop this little one down. That screen is just lit up. Y'all see all that? That red down there is the hard bottom. And then all those arches are all fish. Mm. <laughs> okay, got something pretty good. Mm. Mm. The, on the spinning tackle. Could be a big trigger fish the way it's spinning. No, it's an Almaco Jack. I'm gonna keep this one. There's no size on Almacos. Very pretty Almaco Jack. We're gonna keep this one, take it home, and cook it up for dinner. That is awesome. Whew, finally have something to take home. The Jacks do not have a season for them. You can keep them year round, and uh, they're very good to eat. Like I said, I haven't done a catch and cook on one, so we're gonna take that one home for dinner. I'm gonna drop down this 120 gram slow pitch jig. See what wants to hit this. Hammer. He hammered it. Oh, that's why Shark got him. That's a shame. I'm gonna move to a different spot. I don't wanna feed the sharks anymore. That was the first one I've had eaten by the shark today, so I don't wanna do it again. I just came to another reef, and it's actually an old army tank. There's hundreds of them out here, you see that? You can kinda of see the turret and the barrel. That one's actually still in really good shape. And there's a bunch of fish on it. But these are old M60 tanks that were decommissioned, and instead of just sitting in a desert somewhere rotten they brought them out here and made fishing reefs and now there's plenty of life on them isn't that cool you can definitely see the barrel on that one see it that is awesome mm. what are you what are you gonna be be something we can throw in the cooler 
Oh yeah, we're throwing him in the cooler. Got a sand perch. I just changed colors of the squid treks to the little darker brown. I think it's called green gold glizzy. <laughs> so that's a little sand perch right there. Really good eating. I said next time I catch one, we're throwing it in the cooler and taking it home. So that's what we're going to do. Awesome variety today. Look at that. I always say these things have a mean look on them. I guess it's that slanted pupil, but they look like they just ticked off at the world. So they do have some teeth. That's a good specimen of one. We're gonna throw them in the cooler. All righty, let's get her back down. That was fun. Add to the species list that we've caught today, jigging. No bait required, just lures. And we have some new species for catch and cook on the channel that I haven't done before. So that's also cool. That's back down there. I see my bait on the depth finder and I see small relief, but there are some decent marks. Mm. Do I still have it? Yeah. I love when they hit a jig because you can never place a bet on when they're going to hit it. It will always surprise you. <laughs> and that's what makes it fun. This one's coming up fairly easy. A lizard fish? Really? I wouldn't have expected to catch that out here. See, that's another point proven is you don't know what you're going to catch ever. Lizard fish. I catch these so much inshore. To be honest, I didn't know they were on the reefs out here. If you want to spend a bunch of gas and lures and stuff, come out 20 miles to catch lizard fish. <laughs> Look at that. Those are creepy looking things. This one's not going to go in the cooler. You can eat them. They're very, very bony. I want to get him back. There you go. But it is another species, that's neat. I'm just playing around with colors and different jigs. This is a Nomad Buffalo jig in the fuselier color. I think with this dirtier water that we have, I think that'll stand out pretty well. And blue travels the farthest in water. Like, you know, your pinks and reds, they turn gray the quickest. They lose their color the quickest. But blue travels the farthest down. Mm. Mm. That's a big one. That's a big one. Wow. I don't know what it is. Mm. But it's a big fish. That's huge, whatever this is. Mm. I'm gonna take my time getting it up. This thing's big. I'm tired. <laughs> but I wanna see what it is. There's the top shot. Wow. It's a redfish. What? What? <laughs> it's a redfish? Really? Wow. Ain't nobody gonna believe this. Y'all, I would have never expected to catch a bull red on my slow pitch setup nine miles offshore. <laughs> oh, straight on the bottom. That is insane. <laughs> Look at that redfish. What a good one. He's gonna go back, or she, I should say, cause this is probably a big old female spawner. Cause I gotta vent this fish. Can you hear that air come out? Right, you lay their pectoral fin down and right where their pectoral lays, you, t you stick your vent in. Just make sure you do it at an angle cause you only wanna get the swim bladder. But that's a little vent tool. You can use a descending device as well. What an amazing catch. Now that it's vented, see, look how easy it swam back down. There we go. Wow, right from the bottom too. I would have thought that was a big old red snapper. Well, it's time to go in for me. When you catch something cool like that, you ain't gonna be able to top it that same day. So it's time to go in. As always, I like to go over my tackle that I'm using and I usually do it at the beginning of the video. But if you missed that, here it is. My slow pitch setup, this is a Star Plasma 2 slow pitch rod. I'm using the six foot eight medium with a Daiwa Alexa 300 HD. This is the left hand version with PE4 jigging braid. And then I'm running a 60 pound mono leader to one of these Nomad Squid Treks. And that's the 110 size Squid Treks in variety of colors. The other setup I've been throwing is this Daiwa Saltist MQ 2500. 15 pound braid star plasma 2 rod seven foot medium heavy and a small little nomad vertrex with 30 pound fluorocarbon leader and that's the tackle breakdown it's very simple so we've had a great day of jigging 
That is awesome. I have a couple fish in the cooler. Got to catch a bunch of fish on the jigs in that squid tracks, which is really fun. So I'm gonna head back home. Beautiful day, can't ask for any better. Clean those fish up and get ready to cook them. Y'all continue to join me on this exciting adventure. I'll see y'all back at the dock. And there's a sea turtle. Yeah, see it? <laughs> Check him out. I'm trying to keep it still for you. He's just coming up for air. See if his head will come up again. There it is. What's up, buddy? Pretty big one. Got a lot of barnacle growth on his back. But he's just soaking up this sun. Probably feels good. <laughs> There's a nice Freeman. We just made it back. A very nice easy ride back but it's starting to look like spring break out here the weather's great lots of boats out typically you don't see this in february but the weather's been so nice so hey enjoy it while we can but i'm gonna load this boat up see you at home cleaning those fish so we are back home it's time to clean up these fish it's the next day it's a beautiful day out here just gonna touch up my sword seven inch fillet knife this is a little warthog v sharp they sell it on their website as well this is a seven inch flex fillet. If you only had one fillet knife that to do everything with, this is it right here. This is our Almaco Jack. I did bleed it out in the cooler. You wanna take care of your catch by spiking it. See, I spiked it and then bleed it out. So you put it out of its misery and then you let that blood drain out and you'll be left with some really nice meat. And then this is our sand perch. Check this thing out. They are such beautiful fish, I think. They still have that angry face to them, which I would be too if someone pulled me out of my home to eat me. We're just gonna do these whole. It's very simple to do. I'm gonna scale these fish. I'm just gonna use the back of my sword just to show you that you don't have to have any special gear, but they do make some really nice fish scalers that are cheap. You can screw a bottle top onto a wooden dowel and do that as well. You know, one of those glass bottle tops. You can use a spoon. There's unlimited methods of doing it, but if you just need one tool, back of your fillet knife works just fine. I don't like using the edge because you'll dull it and you might cut through the skin. So I'm just gonna scale this whole fish. Once you scale it, we're gonna dress it so we can cook it whole. That means removing some of the stuff that we don't wanna eat. So you wanna barely poke into cavity down here and empty that out, which that's what we're gonna do. Just kind of scoop it out. YouTube's kind of weird about this, so we'll get this all cleaned up. We have removed the scales. We've dressed it by removing the innards, the gills. Make sure you clean that out real good. And then I remove the eyes. A lot of people like to eat the eyes. I don't. The only thing we have left to do before we get ready to cook this is scoring it. It allows flavor to get down in the meat and it to evenly cook. So all you do is cut it kind of like a mango. Oh, there's a leaf. <laughs> but just kind of cross hatch it here. And this is what it should look like. Look how good that meat looks like on this perch. Now these things have some really sharp gill plates. So you want to be careful if you catch one not to cut yourself. I'm going to do the same thing on the back side and this sand perch will be ready to cook. Fins and all. Now let's move on to our Almaco Jack. We're going to do the same thing. This is just a different species, so their scales are a lot smaller, but they still have scales. See, even though their skin's smooth, you want to get the majority of those scales off. So let me do that on this fish. I love the way their pectoral fins look. Look at the colors on this. So cool. Once you finish scaling it, you're going to do the same thing we did on the sand perch, is just dress it up. That means removing the innards. I like to cut all the way up to that gills as you can open it up and we'll remove the gills and then the eyes and that'll be ready to go as well jack is nice and dressed up all i have left to do is to score it now i'll show this on one of my other catch and cooks but if you have not seen it yet this is actually the inside of the eye see that that's what's inside of these fish's eyes and that's the i'm not a biologist but that's one of the lens that allows them to have a fish eye point of view that's where we get that term from see if you can look through it see how everything's kind of magnified and very very wide i don't know if you can see it the gopro doesn't do close up good but that's really cool huh so that's what's inside of their eye let me finish scoring this fish now almaco jacks are going to have more distinct bloodline 
That's why it's very pertinent on really any jack to bleed it out when you put it in the cooler. But these are phenomenal tasting. I catch a bunch of them. I just haven't cooked one on the channel yet. See, look at that meat. Still nice and white. Cannot wait to eat that up. Now on this Almaco jack, I'm actually gonna cut that tail off so it can fit inside of our wok better because I'm gonna fry it outside on the wok. But that's a perfectly prepared fish. We're just gonna spray it down. See that? Inside's nice and clean. And that's ready to go. Two completely different species, and I guarantee both of these are gonna taste very good. Y'all, we are downstairs now. I just changed out of that shirt because I had fish scales all over me. If you ever scale fish, you know, it can be messy in the wind. I have my sand perch and my Almaco Jack, just as they saw me clean it, and we're gonna prep these to cook. So I'm gonna be cooking outside. Blessed down here in South Alabama to have this amazing springtime weather in February. So this is awesome. I have my walk. You can do this inside too. We're just frying it whole, but I have my wok. This is big enough to be able to fit both these fish in. Have some vegetable oil. Peanut oil works good too, but just any type of oil that you like. Simple seasonings. Chef Paul's Seafood Magic. I really love this stuff. It has great flavor and it's not too salty, so it allows you to salt to taste. Have some fresh peppercorns that we're gonna ground and some sea salt. And just to give it some more flavor, all I did was take a jalapeno pepper, cut it in half, and that's gonna go in our oil with some curry leaves, just to give the oil some flavor. And then we're gonna cover our fish in this batter. So first thing I wanna do, let's get our oil hot. Gonna put our little holders on there. If you haven't seen this before, I did a catch and cook with it. This thing's like over 20 years old. It was made in India out of some basic stuff. And it works when nothing else does. All you need is a way to make a fire. Time to put our oil in there. You don't want to do too much so it doesn't spill over. That's going to be getting hot. Now everything after this is going to be fast paced. It's all informal and fast. Last time was a very complex recipe to an extent and it took some time. This should be nice, fast, and really tasty. So we're going to add some finely ground black pepper. And we're going to get our hands dirty. So that's why I'm not flipping it right now. And some freshly cracked sea salt. Next, our Chef Paul's Seafood Magic. This one's my favorite one. They make a bunch of stuff, but you wanna make sure you mix it up good. And we're gonna coat these up. Informal measurements. Let's do our flour. It's just a mix. Now you can pre-mix this stuff with a seasoning you like. Mix this all together. Make sure you get both sides. And we can add more flour if we need to. We want the whole thing coated. Don't forget the inside either. The inside will fry up nice. Now a lot of that flavor is obviously gonna come from that seasonings that we did, which seemed like a lot, but for both of these whole fish, it wasn't that much. Cause you don't wanna cover up the nice taste of fresh fish like this. So that flavor is gonna come from that oil, that jalapeno and this fresh curry leaf, which we're actually gonna add into our hot oil now. There we go. And now we're going to add our curry leaf, which I'm not going to peel these apart. We're just going to throw the whole stem in. It's just going to add flavor. So that curry leaf, you've heard me say this before and you see me use that a lot. It's different than your curry powder. That's fresh curry plant. We're lucky to have one. It grows pretty good down here. All we got to do is wait for our oil to finish warming up. We'll throw our fish in there. Y'all, this is what we want right here. Our oil is getting hot. If you're cooking on the stove, you want your oil at about 375. Once these brown up a little bit and these curry leaves get crispy, that's when I'm gonna start adding my fish in there. Now we've infused our oil with that delicious curry and chili flavor. So we're gonna set these to the side. There we go. And it's time to put our fish in there. I'm gonna start with the smaller one. I'm gonna do the sand perch. So there it is. Look at that, that's gonna fry up nice and it's not gonna take very long either. So let's put it in. If you're unsure if your oil's hot enough, dip it in there and if it doesn't sizzle, see our sizzles, it's ready to go. If it doesn't sizzle, you need to let your oil warm up some more. But there's our fresh sand perch, came straight from the Gulf of Mexico. That's not gonna take very long to cook. We're gonna do about two and a half minutes on one side, two and a half minutes on the other and then we're gonna pull it out. Check that out. It smells good already. Anything with curry leaves and jalapeno peppers and oil is gonna smell good. 
time to flip the sand perch. There we go. It's high heat, very high heat, because it's over a direct flame. But it's gonna get this tail nice and crispy, the fins crispy, and that meat fully cooked. And then we'll throw our Almaco Jack in there afterwards. It's like, man, I can't wait to get in that hot bath. Sand perch is ready to go. Since it's a smaller fish, it doesn't take long to cook. Look how good that choker looks right there. Oh man, fresh, whole fish. Don't miss any meat. I'll set that on our paper towel to let it drain all that excess oil. And it's time to put our Almaco Jack in. Here we go. Oh yeah, it's ready to go. Let that drop in. It's gonna take a little bit longer, like I said, because it's a bigger fish in that sand perch. But I think that's gonna be really good with two different styles of fish. Oh, you gotta love cooking over a hot flame. There's our Almaco Jack. It's gonna be delicious. It's time to flip the Almaco. Look at the back side of it. Boom. So we'll probably do a couple flips on this just to make sure it's fully cooked. But uh, there we go. Beautiful head meat on there. You can't miss any head meat if you cook the whole head. I do want to try this sand perch. So we're going to take some of that fried curry leaves that we have flavored our oil with. And I'm going to eat one myself because these things are good. Put a little bit of salt on them. Oh, those are good. And cooking over a flame, you don't have to be formal. I'm not even gonna use a fork. But if you watch my channel, you know I absolutely love fried fish tails. So here we go. Mm-hmm. It's like a delicious fish potato chip without a nasty flavor. That's phenomenal. Now that I tried some of that fish tail, I wanna try some of this fin. Mmm, that's so good. Now let's take some of the fried filet off the side. Check that out with a piece of curry leaf on it. It doesn't get any better than that, y'all. Fresh out of the Gulf of Mexico. Here it goes, the sand perch. I'll be keeping those every time. <laughs> tastes better than red snapper. I and mean, red snapper is a very good tasting fish, but this right here tastes better than a lot of the fish that I've caught. I won't be throwing those back promise you that because those are good mmm I'm just keep on eating there's not much I can say other than this is absolutely delicious <laughs> let's check on our Almaco Jack again just gonna kind of slide that head down so it gets some frying going there we go that's still cooking that's gonna be delicious I don't think the Almaco Jack, though, is going to beat this fresh sand perch. Look how white that meat is. Super flaky. Some of the better fish I've had in a long time. Wow. Mmm. Super white, flaky. Great crispy batter. Not over seasoned. I love it. Finish that entire sand perch. Now it's time to get our Almaco Jack. I don't think it's going to be able to top the perch, but we will see. So I have some more of the paper towel so you can drain the oil. Pick it up, set it on there, let it drain. Look at that head meat right there. There's a lot of meat up, up in that main part on these jacks. Even though it's not a big fish, it's practically the size of a pompano, which it is related to a pompano. They're all in the jack family. Jack Creval, Amber Jack, Pompano, Blue Runner or Hardtails, they're all in the same family. So, but some of them taste better than others. We're gonna let this cool down and then we'll plate it. Now our Amico Jack has been draining the excess oil. We'll pat it down some more and move it over to our plate. It's still really hot, so I'm gonna to continue to let it cool down. But check that out. Got our side of jalapeno, which it actually didn't add any spice. It just infused flavor into that oil. Now, if you want to add some more spice, you can always add a hotter chili into that oil, but there we go. That's going to cool down. There is a nice piece that fell off right here. Check out that really nice piece of fish. That meat looks really good, especially after bleeding it out. Mmm. It is good. 
different flavor than that sand perch. The sand perch tastes like a bluegill or brim. Really, really clean white meat. This tastes like a saltwater fish. It almost tastes like a snapper. It's still very delicious, just different than the sand perch, which it's a jack. These are well worth keeping as well. Mm. It does have a firmer texture to it, but still a great taste. If I can compare it to something, it tastes like a snapper. So I'm gonna take some of this head meat because I've been eyeing this the whole time I've cooked it. But see this head meat right here? That's a really good bite on all jacks in terms of ones with this white flesh like this, especially on like a pompano, but that's a very sweet bite. Let's try that. Oh yeah, it tastes just like a pompano. That's awesome, absolutely love it. And I haven't done a catch and cook on these at all on the channel, which is so cool to be able to do something new for y'all. I've caught these before and I've eaten them before, but I just hadn't done a catch and cook since doing YouTube on them. And I'm glad I did and I hope y'all can try them as well. Man, that's really good. I'll still pick the sand perch over it just because that was a delectable piece. It was very flaky. You do not need to do a lot to it. But this Almaco Jack tastes like a pompano to me. And pompanos are delicious. This was delicious. So I hope y'all can get out there and try this recipe on any fish that you cook. It's very simple. Cooking outside in beautiful weather like this doesn't get any better. Y'all, if you enjoy these catching and cooking series and you have found yourself to not subscribe to the channel, go smash that subscribe button down below. I love doing these. It's awesome being able to cook your fresh catch. And I'm so happy that y'all can join me. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. All the companies that the channel works with are linked down below. There's even some promo codes in there. So if you plan on buying something, go see if there's a promo code for you to use. I want to thank the good Lord up above, most importantly, for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.